Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be doing some liquid culture lit. These are all the materials you're going to be needing. I will include those in the description. Uh, we start by drilling the bigger holes, which are going to be for the injection port and for the little filter pad. Uh, we don't need a bench drill press to do this. You can do it with a regular uh, hand drill. Uh, we just have this one here on site, so uh, it makes it a lot easier. Always make sure that you, uh, in between, inspect everything, remove any debris so you don't get anything in the way, uh, especially because it's plastic. And make sure that you have a good grip uh, on the piece when you're doing, whether it's a manual or <laughs> Pinch drill. Uh, with them all completed uh, with the bigger holes, now we have to change our drill bit. We're going to do the one for the grommets that are used for the uh, little uh, valve we're going to put in the way. So we use two drill bits in the whole project. One is going to be uh, for the filter pads and the other one for the line itself. Uh, I tend to put those a little bit of a kind of triangle configuration uh, so that we have some separation between them. That's really just a matter of preference. Then uh, we then complete it, we can now start doing the assembly process. We have all of our parts. Uh, I tend to put all the pieces in, uh, in one table and then just assemble there. Uh, the hose that we use, it's a uh, heat resistant. It's a silicone hose. And, and I cut this piece about six and a half inches. Uh, that um, allows us to connect to the lid uh, have enough to go into into the jar, uh, to the bottom of the jar, without um, having too much slack and uh, and actually not plugging itself right. That you have too much uh, slack on the bottom. Uh, those same pieces that we use uh, for the for the lid on the inside, uh, if we cut them in half, uh, I think they're really good size to then use for the piece that's going to be on the outside of the lid. That's the part that is going to have our lure lock uh, adapter to actually connect syringes onto. Uh, so now you can see the uh, these are self-healing injection ports. And again, I'll put all the links in the description. Uh, so with a lot of patients, you can go through all of those uh, and put all the grommets in there will be the, the next one. I leave the filter patch to the very end uh, as I'm working and, and touching things. Uh, those are a little more delicate. So. And then the next piece is going to be that one way piece that allows liquid to go out, but nothing uh, to go in. Um, if you insert those right there through the grommet, it's a really nice snug fit. Uh, and then on the inside, uh, you'll see that you have a little bit of a, of a sleeve that it's created by the grommet itself. And we're gonna pull that back and that's actually gonna serve a purpose. Uh, it's going to further seal uh, that grommet in place uh, on the inside. So now when we take our piece of silicone hose and we put it on the inside, uh, it's gonna push that back and create a really nice seal. Uh, all these parts uh, are really creating a good seal. So you don't have any liquid or air or uh, any contamination there. Uh, as you can see, uh, they're pretty firm. I can uh, tug on it, pull on it, and we know that they're not going to go uh, anywhere. Uh, and they have a good seal also when we go into our uh, autoclave. So this is what the completed jar looks like uh, in terms of how it fits, how uh, the top. So now we can proceed and do the other pieces, those smaller ones that we cut. Uh, that's going to be for that one way uh, gate valve that we have there, which is going to allow us to extract liquid uh, with nothing coming in uh, contamination. This is a lure lock uh, barb fitting. Uh, this one would go then uh, on the end. Then at the end of this, I like to use the caps, uh, make sure that nothing gets in there. And it's the same caps that we use uh, on syringes. Um, so we buy them high, high quantity and just uh, have them handy for, whether for syringes uh, or for this ones. Uh, now here's one that I uh, put some water just to show you how we would actually use it. We have this lure lock uh, couplings uh, and what these enable you to do is essentially connect two syringes. Uh, 
one to the other. So uh, if you ever had a need for that, now in this case, we're going to use it to connect to the syringe, whether it's a 10 milliliter, uh, 20, whatever size uh, you prefer, and then connect that onto that port after removing the cap, and then you can easily extract liquid. Uh, the valve in between, as you can see, I'm trying to push liquid back in uh, and it doesn't really allow me, which is great. Uh, so we know that we are going to reduce uh, the risk of contamination there. Uh, obviously, when we do all this, we'll sanitize, we'll use alcohol, uh, make sure that everything is nice and clean. Um, all these pieces are heat resistant. So I'm um, just showing you here when we pull it out of our uh, pressure cooker, um, which we are doing in the, about five at a time is what we can fit uh, on these. Uh, they have come out pretty hot. Uh, so the first thing that I like to do is uh, make sure that I can tighten those caps back. We left a little bit of air, a little bit of loose before we put them uh, there. And now we take them into our clean room. Um, I maintain them covered with the, with the foil uh, as much as I can all the way uh, until when I'm bringing them into the clean room. And then once we have them uh, in front of the, of the flow hood, then we remove that and then they can cool down. Uh, and typically I just leave them for about 24 hours uh, before we do anything. While that's cooling down, uh, we use Mycophile. So uh, shout out to the guys of Mycophile. Uh, we pretty much uh, run everything and catalog all of our spawn and cultures uh, and even our fruiting. Uh, through there. Uh, and it's very easy to just create the QR codes uh, and create the labels for whatever you're doing in this case uh, for the liquid culture. Uh, so we're going to be doing about 18 different cultures uh, in, in this batch. Um, and my workflow, I like to create the labels uh, first. Uh, and then I will go on to, you know, inoculating one by one based on what the label says and that really reduces any confusion, make sure there's you no know, any mix-ups there. So if you like this video, like and subscribe. Thank you for following us.